So I believe in a few things. I believe in the generosity of sharing ideas. Uh, I believe in the power of books as a substantial document that can uh, make a difference. I believe in uh, the authenticity of actually doing the work as opposed to just talking about it. Uh, and I believe that making change happen is one of the most important things we can do as people. And for all those reasons, I believe in Mitch Joel. Come on up, Mitch. Thanks. <laughs> Hell was probably the place you and I were 15 years ago when we would sit down next to people and they'd say to us, uh, tell me why I need a website. Right. And it was like a nightmare. And it was a nightmare because both you and I, I think, felt that the internet was going to change everything. But when they had those comments, they were genuine because it could have been a fad. Like, the web could have been a fad. And if you sort of look around the room and ask yourself, like, do you think uh, social media is a fad? I don't think that's a fad. I don't think mobile is a fad. Using data. <laughs> you know, it's like email. Email, yeah. It's like we know unequivocally, like, th these are not fads, but we're not doing anything about it still. How do you take and look at a world where, you know, the next five years are going to be very, very different for all of us at work? Uh, they're going to, it's going to be very, very dramatic. I think there's going to be a lot more disruption. I'm so let's start with there. Is, is our careers over? I think the construct of what we thought a career was has fundamentally changed. When we sort of think about what a career is, we have to reimagine it. And the reason I say that is because I came from a time, and I know you did too, where people did have that. They worked for 30 years, and you sort of, fingers crossed, and nobody screwed up, and you get your pension. We transitioned really quickly into this place where people had five or six different jobs in their careers. Where we net it out, I think, and it's sort of just seeing the beginning of this now, is I think we're going to have people who are going to have four to five different careers in their lifetime now. Right. So that projects me to say, like, yeah, a career as we've known it has completely changed. I don't think we've ever had in the history of business a moment like this, where as an individual you could do these amazing things that you could never do before and actually call it a career or actually call it work or actually be compensated for it the way we have it. And uh, So I look at it from that sort of bigger view and I'm somewhat frustrated with people who don't love what they do for a living. I think the scariest thing that people will take away is the fact that you as individuals are solely reliant on yourself for your financial success. We have a, we have a culture of, uh, of um, allowance. Yep. We have a culture of, you know, my parents used to give me 20 bucks a week and now my boss does. You know, I, my, I want a MacBook Air but my boss won't let me have one. When I realized that I'm the only person responsible for my financial outcome, it changed the game for me. And I know it did for you as well. You know, there's some people I've met who work at Google who the only thing you can say about them is Google. Right. And right. there are other people I work who, for Google, yeah. There are other people who work at Google who are using it as a platform. And Google management is enlightened enough to be fine with that. Because if it's a platform that is filled with people who the world needs to hear from, that helps Google. But also, if you're not an anonymous cog in a vast system, it's way more likely that you're going to be able to have a career that you can count on. I think that there are definitely certain industries that have not felt the brunt of, of digitization or the brunt of disruption that are feeling it. I look at you know robotics as sure. an engine of not uh, automation, but an engine of augmentation. I'm looking at wearable technology, all these sorts of new things that are very exciting to me because they're sort of the new web right. browser. And I think about the fact that you know you would think, well, the farmers are safe, and you sort of go, you know what? I don't, I don't know. Like I don't know if anybody is quote unquote safe. And I'll quote Seth Godin here because he won't. But you know, Seth is the first guy that says, you know, the safest thing you can do is be risky, and the riskiest thing you can do is be safe. And I think that that's scary. It can be scary if you're an entrepreneur, and I think it's even scarier when you work in an organization because because you sort of feel you're limited by your job title. Yeah. But I do think that we've never lived in a more interesting time for people to be more than their job title. And that's the if you if you want to see data driven, you just hang out with farmers. Farming has changed more than almost right. any other field in the last 50 years. And the farmers, whether they're in rural Kenya or Iowa, the ones who are thriving are 100 percent data driven and cycling it, ever faster. I was at a Google event a couple months ago and I saw Eric Schmidt speak and he said, uh, you know, in God we trust everyone else must bring data. I think the most profound thing we're seeing is the fact that data now really drives every layer of business. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing and the scary thing, too. There are certain people who are trying to create the industry that doesn't yet exist. And I think that that's the right posture versus people who are mitigating risks and trying to minimize mistakes as they gain success. 
And success for me typically is mostly financial and no other way, because the, 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 the one thing entrepreneurs don't want to risk is the, is the money part, usually. Part of the answer to, to your question, sir, is the trade to the entrepreneur today is it's a thousand times cheaper to be in business, a thousand than it was when my dad started his company, literally a thousand. So we expect that there's gonna be a trade-off, and the trade-off is that thing you built isn't gonna last like it used to. There used to be you built a hospital crib factory and it was gonna have a 50-year run. Now you're gonna build some clever thing online that only cost you 100 bucks, and maybe it's only gonna last two months, and then you're gonna squiggle and do the next thing. We need to teach our kids to do that same thing. Um, and I talk about the fact that I don't want my child to be bilingual, and it's very stressful to say that in Montreal, Quebec, and I say I want my kid to be trilingual. Uh, English, French, and can you guess what the third language is? It's code. <laughs> I think why Seth blogs every day is similar to me, which is when you read a lot and you're doing a lot, the only way you can actually do the critical thinking of it is to physically write it. I, I don't know if you feel that way too. It's that sort of exercise of like, what, why, do, why do I feel this way about this or why is it that way? And I challenge all of you to really like look at any article and ask yourself one question. Why do I like this or why do I not like this? And then write about it. And you'll see you'll be blogging daily in, in no time flat. Um, in 1993, I had the chance to buy hundreds of domain names. I ended up with only one. It had paid off, but I had a chance to buy hundreds of them. And I didn't. And in 1998, all of you had the chance to make a groundbreaking internet 1.0 company, and most of you didn't. And in 2003 and 2004, the land grab was going on for how to get a foothold in social media, and a lot of people wanted to wait and see what would happen. Well, it's 2013, and you've written a manifesto. And the thing that I would say to anybody who's watching this is, it's time. This is your turn. It's gotten wider and wider. It's not a tall pyramid anymore. It's this huge plateau mesa where there is land available for people who want to stand up and say, I'm going to own this. I'm not going to be a victim of it. But what books are fabulous at is being able to walk into your coworkers and your boss's office and go like that. Yeah. Right? Because it's all wrapped up, it's official, and it's ready to so go. So one of the things I'm hoping is that the people who see this will buy four, not one. Because that's what it is. What it is is this device that you can throw on someone else's desk and start a conversation. And I think it needs to be said that that's what you set out to do because it worked. Typically, when you come to these things, you buy the book. My publisher was very kind. They actually gave everybody a book. So if you could thank Hachette and Grand Central and Google and Seth, that would be my Great.